Welcome to the channel. Creality sent me an Ender 3 version 3 to try out, so I figured I'd record an unboxing and give my initial thoughts while I was setting it up. This isn't a sponsored video, they just sent me the machine to play with, and I'm just giving you my honest thoughts as I set it up for the first time. With the box open, let's see what we have on top. First we have uh, the instructions and some paperwork. Next is a filament sample in an airtight package. Some filament tubing. It's a small bag of some plastic clips. This box has some assorted tools, zip ties, and a USB drive. The uh, spool holder, arm, and post. And the last item on the top layer is the touchscreen. Now getting into the second layer, I can say the machine is nicely packaged. This seems to be some kind of support for the spool holder. And uh, here's the power cord. This is the upper section of the printer. First impressions are quite impressive. It's a solid piece of cast metal. Also, there's no lead screws, just metal rods on the X and Z axes with uh, linear bearings. It's a core XY style system, but on its side, so uh, XZ. Here's the main body of the printer. Again, it feels very substantial as it's a solid piece of cast metal. Taking a look at the wiring, it looks very nicely managed and clean. There's just two main cables. The heater bed cable looks like a thick extension cord instead of the normal uh, wire with some kind of braided sleeve around it. Same with the main wire harness. It's one thick cable running up to the print head with a few smaller wires wrapped nicely around it. The bed is also sliding on two metal bars using linear bearings. My first impression before I start assembling the two parts of the machine is that it feels like a high-end appliance, not your typical printer. The cast metal parts along with what seems to be a powder coated finish means all the corners are smooth and rounded. From a visual and physical perspective, it feels very refined and solid. The assembly is simple and satisfying. The top section just slots into the base with a solid clunk, and then it's just a matter of adding the eight screws supplied. The wiring is pretty simple and self-explanatory. There's only a few plugs for the motors, a plug for the limit switch, the runout sensor, and then the main cable that runs to the hot end. Now for the bag of those plastic clips. There's one that goes over the hot end connector and secures the cable and acts as a strain relief, and the other three clips go over the filament tube to connect it to the hot end wire. The screen just has one plug and then it slots into the printer's base. The last part is the filament spool holder. It just slots onto two mounting pegs on the side of the machine. Before I turn the machine on and try some prints, I'll wipe down the bed with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure it's clean. Now let's run through the startup sequence. The first step is selecting your language and then agreeing to the privacy policies. After that, you select your Wi-Fi and set your password information. And then finally, you set your time zone. At the end, you're given a QR code that you can scan with uh, your mobile app that'll link your machine so then you can access it through the app. Once that's all done, the machine will start going through its self-check sequence, including input shaping and bed leveling.
Once that was all done, it detected that there was a firmware update. The update was seamless. It downloaded and installed automatically after pressing the download button. Now it's time to try its first print, and I'll be using the supplied filament for this. The first print will be the included pre-slice benchy, which says it should only take 13 minutes. I'll let this run at normal speed for a bit so you can see how fast it's moving. The results seem pretty flawless. It's hard to w film white filament, but I really don't see any issues with this print. I ran the same G-code with some no-name filament I had, and the results weren't as good, but still not bad. Next I ran a few of the other pre-sliced models, but this time using Polymaker PLA. All these prints turned out pretty flawless also. Some of the overhangs on the tower test could have been better, but that's really all I could see wrong with it. I then installed Creality Print so I could try slicing my own models. Creality Print seemed okay, but not well as laid out as the Orca Slicer which I'm used to using. All three of these models have print in place elements, so we'll see how well it handles the tight tolerances. For these prints I used a marble PLA. Starting with Rex, the print was pretty good, except for the end of his tail. It seemed to have added a brim just to the last few parts or printed too close to the bed. Once I cut them off, it was fine. The dog seemed fine except for the top layer. It seemed like it was either under extruded or it just it didn't print all the way to the edge. The chip clip was mostly okay, except uh, it was very difficult to break free. This is actually the second one I printed. The first one I ended up breaking trying to free the parts. If you're using Creality Print to slice your prints, let me know in the comments if you're having any of these issues. Since the included parts were so good, I'm thinking the issue is with the slicer. So I'm gonna try it in Orca Slicer and see what happens. I couldn't find a profile yet for the V3, so I made my own based off of the K1. I'll have this on my Patreon for free if anybody wants to try it for themselves. These prints came out pretty flawless again. There's a little bit of stringing, but that should be easily fixed in the profile.
Next I printed Rex in the chip clip and they were also flawless. There were no issues with Rex's tail and the parts of the chip clip broke free easily. I then tried Rex with another filament just to check and it also printed well. Then I thought I'd try printing something big, so I scaled Rex up as big as I could. Again, he printed pretty great, no major issues. So my overall first impressions is that I really like this printer. It feels like what a printer in 2024 should be. A simple plug and play appliance that prints very fast. It feels like something the average person can own. Something like a sewing machine or a kitchen mixer. Something with some basic knowledge you can make your own things at home with. The included slicer still needs a little bit of work though. If they can bring that up to the standard of Orca Slicer, it would be a great complete package. I'll be using this machine in upcoming projects, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see how it works out long term. And if you like this unboxing, please consider hitting that like button. It really helps the channel grow. If you do a lot of post-processing of your prints, you might like this playlist where I go over a bunch of different techniques to how to easily smooth your prints for painting. Or if you like watching cute dogs, you might like this video where I print some toys for my uh, husky to see if they hold up. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.